to the Board Game Network. I'm going to be showing you how to play this game called Jorvik, uh, designed by Stefan Feld, and it uh, plays two to five players, and it's a Viking game. Uh, there's two different complexity of the rules. There's the Jarl and the Karl, and the Karl is the easy game, and it only plays half of this board, so you flip this other half underneath. I'll explain the whole game to you. There is, uh, um, you've got A, B, C, and D cards. They're different seasons. But you're just basically going to separate them. And you just need to check in the setup in the rule book because it'll have you, based on the number of players, take, take a certain number of cards out. And all of the Jarl cards, they have this symbol down here. So if you're play, not playing the Jarl game, you're going to pull like half of the deck out. So the Jarl game is going to be a longer game there because you go through this deck. And these have A, B, C, and D. So you're going to shuffle all the Ds together. You're going to put this Attack of the Picks card face up right here. Uh, it's a 4 at minus 4. That's the last card in the deck. You're going to shuffle the Ds, put them down. Shuffle the Cs, put them on top. Shuffle the Bs, put them on top. And then shuffle the As and put them on top after you've removed some cards based on the number of player. Everybody gets a player board here and this shows you the different phases of the turn. You have a scoring token for your victory points and everybody starts at 10. The reason for starting at 10 is you can lose points in this game so you can go backwards. You are gonna have five coins to start with you're going to start with three Vikings, but in the Jarl game, you're going to start with four Vikings. And these brown Vikings, these are, they don't have two extra for every color out here. There are some cards that let you get extra Vikings or extra workers. And so you're going to take the brown ones instead. This is the first player token. Here's all the different cubes here. These go in your draw bag. And in the in the Jarl game, you're going to use all the cubes. In the Karl game, you're going to take out the yellow, the blue, and the pink. And you'll notice there's only three of each, so those are a lot more rare than the regular uh, cubes that have nine of each. So you're going to put those in there. You go through your different phases here, your supply phase. So on the supply phase, you are simply flipping up cards onto the board. And here's the number of players, two players, two or more, two or more, two or more, three or more, four or more, or five. So you're going to flip up if you've got, let's say we've got a four player game. We just start flipping. I said five players, so that would fill up the whole row. If we had four players, we'd only go that far. And then we also fill up up here the same way if we're playing the Jarl game. Then we go to Demand, which is the second phase. And Demand is where we put our Vikings down. It shows our desire to have certain cards. Uh, we look at these and go, wow, gee, which ones of these do I want? And whoever the first player is, he's going to put a Viking down. And he has to put it at the top of a column of whichever card he's interested in. And then the next player goes and it goes around until everybody's out of Vikings. That works different up here on the top. You got some cards up here. And I really didn't shuffle these so they're probably not mixed up too good. If you, take a, if you want a card up here between 7 and 12, you put your Viking on it and immediately move it to the all the way to the left up here. And so that card's no longer available, and these ones are still available. Down here, somebody else can come along and say, well, I'm interested in that card that you're interested in. And somebody else can come along and put another one down. And you can even put another one down on your own column, as long as you have less than eight Vikings there. Eight is the most Vikings you can have for any one card. 
and at the end of this phase, the demand phase, any that don't any cards that do not have any Vikings under them immediately get discarded. Then you go to the buying phase. In the buying phase, you start from the leftmost, you start with the one and go forward, and then go up here. So with the one, nobody's interested in that one, so that one's discarded. So this one here. Green would have to pay one coin for everybody in the row. So that would cost four to buy that card, or green can say, well, I don't want it. And then it becomes blue's chance to buy it, and it would cost three. Blue can say, well, I'm not going to buy that. And then red could buy it for two. And if red doesn't buy it, then green can buy it for one, or choose not to buy it at all. And then so it goes down each card. And then up here, Say we got some cards up here. Whoever's the first person here in the in the row up here gets the chance to buy that card for how many cards are up here in the row. So green could buy that card for three. Once that one if, if could choose to buy it or discard it, this one would be available for two. This one would be available for one. So that's the buying phase. And then you have the loading phase. So all the cards that you successfully bought, you are going to put them above your player mat up here. And this is when income happens. And you're going to get one coin each round at this point. But if you did not buy any cards at all, you're going to get two coins. Okay. Then you're going to move all of your cards down here into the personal area except for ship cards. We did not see any ship cards. Uh, ship cards stay up here. They have uh, blocks on them, cubes on them. And then let me show you this card here. Here's the different kinds of cards in the basic deck. These are artisan cards. They are worth points at the end. You are going for the most number of points at the end of the game. This is kept track of with the victory point track there. And so this card is worth eight victory points at the end of the game if it's been completed. So it shows you the final completion icon there. If it's been completed, it's worth eight. If it has not been completed, it's not worth anything. So it requires a brown cube, a white cube, and an orange cube from the cubes. And we have a barn here. And this barn simply gives you an extra coin every turn. So instead of getting one coin uh, as a standard, you'd get two coins. Or if you didn't buy any cards, you'd get three coins. So it gives you an extra coin. This one is just worth victory points. It's a feast card. If you've got one feast card, it's worth two victory points at the end. If you've got two of them, it's worth five. Three is worth nine. All four is worth 14. There's only four in the deck. Here's a ship card. When you're drawing these cards and a ship shows up, you immediately stop drawing. You dig in the bag and you draw out as many cubes as is on the picture. And you put them on the ship. And so those are the cubes that the artisan once placed on their card to complete their uh, whatever they're working on. Here's a card that says each of your coins is worth one victory point at the end of the game. And here's one that is a warrior card and it's worth five strength. Now a, f a warrior card defends the city. So when a, an attack of the picks card shows up, uh, whenever, the, whenever you're drawing and you draw an attack of the picks and it comes out, you immediately stop everything. Whoever is defending the city the most, so you're going to count up the value of your warrior cards down here. Whoever has the most gets a four victory point bonus. Whoever has the least goes back four on this card. There's different points on different cards. Um, so that immediately stops and then that will get discarded and then you keep drawing. 
So that's all the basic cards there and how they work. There's different ones. This one gives you, you can trade a coin, one of the cubes, uh, the yarn cube for a coin if you want to. And your player board here shows, well, once you get, let's put your, uh, like if you bought this ship, and you're on the loading phase here, it's still phase four, you're going to move all the cards down except for your ships, and then you're going to take the cubes off your ship and put them down here on your artisans and try to fill in your artisans uh, so that you can get those victory points. Now, if this is the only artisan I have, I'm not in very good shape because I've got an orange and a gray, and neither one of those goes on that artisan. You do have an, a spare space right here, so you can store one cube only. There are also, here's a barn here, and so if you had a barn, that would store four extra cubes. And this just goes like this until the, com the deck is completely out, and then you have the final attack of the picks card that you have at the bottom of the deck and then you're going to score that again just like you've been scoring previously. Now here's some things on your player board here. If you have three blocks of any color, you can trade three blocks for a single block of a color of your choice. So when you do this kind of trading, you put those cubes that you're trading, you put them into the supply. This is the supply here. And then you would take one cube out of the supply. So the cube has to be out of the supply. You're not picking them out of the bag. It has to be in the supply. And then this one says you trade two of any color cubes for one coin. Once you put your cubes on an artisan, they stay there permanently. You cannot be moving them around later in the game. Once you've gone through the four phases, then the first player token passes to the next player to the left. And then you go until you get to the end of the game. And you're looking for these symbols here, the final scoring symbols. And so you're scoring up any of your cards that have final scoring, like your artisans, any of your points here to further add to your victory point total. And then you see who the winner is. So that's all there is to this game called Yorvik. Uh, if there's a tie at the end of the game, whoever has the most coins uh, is the tiebreaker there. But this is from the Great Designer series. This is number five. I now have completed my set of Great Designer series from Stronghold Games. Um, I have yet to play a dud game in this series. This is... I don't know, the fourth game I've played from out of the six. And every single one of them is, is very interesting. It gives unique mechanisms. Um, this is almost like a worker placement, but the unique concept of paying based on how many people want a card type thing adds quite a twist to you're, you're really having to manage your money well so that you can buy cards and look ahead and see what cards you might still be able to buy. You know, do I pay three for this one or do I wait and try to get this one for one down here? You know, I might spend all my coins up here and then not be able to buy this one down here cheap type of thing. So, uh, interesting game. Make sure you tune into all of our videos here at the Board Game Network so you can uh, hopefully learn how to play all of the great designer series from Stronghold Games.